We're delving into the trend of quiet quitting your job. That's on the way very soon. Back now from the great resignation to the new trend of quiet quitting, which we are hearing loads about lately. The world of work has undergone a serious shift since 2020. Here to explain all and what it means for you is our resident uh, behavioural psychologist, Podrick Watch. Good to see you, Podrick. Good Welcome back to the show. Hey, so this is a really interesting one. It's called quiet quitting. What mm. is it and why are we hearing so much about it now? We're seeing so many work trends emerging. Um, this one emerged from TikTok. And if I were to say to you that you go to work, you do your job, and then you go home within your working hours and you do no more, would that sound like quiet quitting to you? He's been no, watching us. He's been <laughs> it watching sounds him. normal. But that's, that's what quiet quitting is. So we've had the great reevaluation after COVID. Mm. And now this, this, this trend emerged. Really good marketing. It's got like QQ, it's got alliteration, it's got something yeah. that caught on on TikTok. And now what you have is this idea that people, instead of having their work built, or sorry, their life built around their work, they're going to go back to that work-life balance. It emerged from China. Um, yes, they called it lying flat. They called it the lying flat trend, yes. So it came from tech firms who built really lovely environments for their workers, free lunches, nice gyms and stuff like mm. that but then they were expected to work 996, which is 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. Ouch. And this was their response to that. So it is, I suppose, in years past, it would have been called work to rule, where you're just doing what you do. Is it quitting? It's not quitting. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, a response to a re-evaluation after COVID? I think so. And is it something that has caught on and caught fire and really resonated with people who see themselves in gen Generation Z, which are people yes. born after 1997, most definitely. And I think the idea that I'm not going to build my life around my work, if my work isn't going to be able to afford me career progression, if I can't afford to live, if I can't afford to buy a house, if they feel there's that feeling that the social contract has been broken, well, then I'm going to quiet quit and I'm not going to devote as much time to my work. OK, so should you not just leave your job if you don't like it? Or should you be talking to management and saying, uh, is there a way where we can make this better for all of us? Yeah, when I started looking into this, it became, and I actually put a shout out on social media to say, what is this about? Tell me your experiences about this. And it seems that quiet quitting is this trend where uh, not everybody can do it. And mm. if you are able to do it, people are, are selecting to do it. So, for instance, you have the question, quite rightly, if you're not enjoying your work, if you are having difficulties at work, how do you address those? And a lot of it comes down to boundary setting. You know, in Ireland, we have this kind of knee-jerk response uh, where we will say, yeah, sure, no problem, I'll do that, without following that up by saying, well, are there going to be more hours involved here? Mm. Or is this going to affect my work-life balance? So the, 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 the psychologically healthy thing to do is to bring that to the fore, is to talk with your boss, is to talk with your colleagues. But instead, what we tend to do is have our own little mind fight. You know what a mind fight is? Go on. All right. You know when you actually do address these things with your boss and you talk with your colleague who's not pulling their weight in their team and you tell them exactly how they're going to change, but you're doing it in the car on the way to <laughs> work. It's and it's in your mind yeah. and you're having a mind fight. If you're having a mind fight <laughs> after work or at work, you know that there's something wrong and it needs to be addressed. So the psychologically healthy thing to do, even though it can be uncomfortable, is to try and address that somehow. Unfortunately, quiet quitting seems to be a more passive, aggressive way, which isn't really designed to instigate change. Um, so, yeah. Doesn't, but, like, if I was an employer, if I said to you, poor, can you stay an extra five minutes? I want to talk about the show. And you're like, no, I'm done. Like, you're not a desirable candidate in the workplace for me, though. I think it's more than just that extra five minutes. I think it's where it becomes that hour, that two hours, where you are not being recognised for that extra work that you're doing. And this is where the trend on TikTok, and mostly TikTok, in fact, of quiet quitting has emerged from, where people are saying, you know what, if I'm not getting recognised at work, if I'm not getting that promotion, if I'm not getting that flexibility from my employer, why should I do that for them? And that is the response that's, that's coming across. But what I, what I didn't like about it was the idea that I'm not going to 
loudly quit. I'm not going to bring these issues to the fore. I'm not going to represent my colleagues who mightn't be in a, the privileged position that I have to slacken back. Yeah. So quiet quitting means that I'm only going to do my job and that's it. But if there are people who can't do that, you're landing more work on their plate. So you end mm -hmm. up asking the other person to stay back who has you know, no other option within their job, who is afraid of losing their job, who is in that job for life. And so it, it's not a, a response I see that, that punches up. In some, mm. some ways, it, it, it doesn't address the problem. It just allows it to continue. Because there are employees who are going to have to work extra because they don't want to be left vulnerable. They don't want to feel like I could lose my job if I'm not seen yeah, to yeah. work the weekend when you're asked by your boss. So it is kind of like you are in a privileged position if you're able to go, no, I'm done, I to a degree, but we also recognise that that's the way work should be, isn't it? We should be. Is able this a hangover though from COVID? Because working from home was so brilliant for so many people, but then it sort of turned into living at work, where you could potentially still yes. be checking emails into the wee hours of the now night. Now you're onto something. So I now, think... only now. How long have uh, been on? <laughs> well, <laughs> only, only. It should have been me who told you. But I'm <laughs> only quiet quitting because the the norm became that after hours we could oh. contact you because you were working from home. Now, part of that quiet quitting response is I'm turning off my emails when I'm finished work. I'm not contactable outside of work. I have a life outside of this and I want to, to make sure that the work-life balance stays steady for me. So quiet quitting is this response to say, no, I'm not contactable. There are clear delineated lines between when I'm at work and when I'm not at work. Mm. And that's, that's part of the, of the, the response. If you're a boss watching this, how do you build a team or ensure that the team working for you don't want to adopt that, you know, quiet quitting mentality? Like how, and also similarly as an employee, if you are asked to go the extra mile, how can you make it work for you so you don't end up just bitter and full of resentment? If you find yourself in the mind fight zone, yeah, where okay. you are talking to yourself and, and really frustrated with your work and you're thinking perhaps I'm just going to, to quiet quit. Ask yourself, firstly, have you found meaningfulness in your job? So Martin Seligman, the, the really prominent psychologist around happiness, will say that we need meaning in our lives. Sometimes it's at work, sometimes it's outside of work, that's fine. But if it is something that we can find in our, in our work, sure, we need to do that. People who are employed in the care industries, people who are employed in hospitals, people who are in education, who we hand our kids over to or who look after us when we're sick, don't have the luxury of saying, I'm going to quiet quit because the people who are impacted are actually the people they care for. Mm -hmm. So instead, the, peop the folks that contacted me about this said, I just had to quit or pay back my hours and really set clear boundaries and address this at work. And eventually, or, sorry, what ended up happening within those scenarios is that work practices changed. So it wasn't just going under the radar. It wasn't just a passive aggressive response. It wasn't just a series of mind fights. It was dealt with. Then you're going to the employers and you're saying, well, hold on a second. There's no amount of free yoga classes that are going to pay my rent. There are no amount of work away days that are going to pay for childcare. Yeah. You know, there's no amount of claps or pats on the back that are going to pay my energy bills. As an employer, are you helping people to bridge the gap between what, they need, what they're doing at work and how they're living? Because that has been a lot of the, the focus here has been the, the, the gap between wages that people are getting paid for, they call it what, uh, acting your, acting 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 your, your wage. wage. Yeah. Acting your wage, yeah. yeah. interesting. So this idea that if you are working hard, you should be remunerate, re remunerated, yeah. and people are finding that they weren't, and they weren't able to live. Or they, they took the example of Homer Simpson, which I found really interesting in 1994, when the Simpsons were out, that Homer was a guy who was working in a power plant in a technician's job in the United States on single income, and was able to have a house, three kids, on, and a car as well. Yeah. And he wasn't really working that hard. No. Whereas now people are working long, long hours. They're finding that they're barely struggling to pay the rent. They feel like the social contract is broken. And this is one of the responses for quiet quitting. It's really interesting. It, 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 it's fascinating. And we could go on and on with yeah, it, but we're out of time. I know, there's loads to talk about. You're not going to quiet quit on us tonight. No. Because you're going to stick. You've smelled what's cooking. I've smelled what's cooking. It's great. You're sticking around <laughs> for Quantity's dinner. Good to talk to you, Paul Rick. Uh, yes, stay with us.